Assalamu alaikum everybody. Uh, my name is Sabrina and I'm a Palestinian, uh, born in Palestine and I would like to start by saying, pointing out that every Palestinian uh, carries a burden and every Palestinian has a story to tell because each one of us have been affected uh, by the Israeli occupation. So my story is not unique uh, in any way. Uh, I was born in Palestine. Uh, my family comes from um, a small village called uh, Bir Ma'in. Uh, their village, along with 530 other Palestinian villages, were completely destroyed, um, attacked by the Zionist uh, militia in 1948. Um, so my family was dis displaced. Uh, along with 750,000 Palestinians who lost their homes. And this is how um, I ended up growing up in a refugee camp in east of Jerusalem. Um, let me put on my glasses. Um, born under occupation, growing up in a refugee camp takes away the sense of security and the sense of what is normal. It can force you to grow before your years and robs you from your childhood. So you are a refuge in your own country. You are assigned a refugee, an UNRWA refugee card. You grew up in an overcrowded camp, a small piece of land, limited resources. Uh, there's no parks for your kids to play. There's no fields for them to run. There is no room to breathe. But yet, it does not end there. So today, I'll be sharing with you some of the stories that my family and I went through uh, and still going through under the Israeli occupation. Three girls, and uh, I'm the youngest, and one boy, that's my brother, and my second youngest, and my mom. Uh, my mom raised us after my dad uh, passed away when we were very young. Today, today I'll be focusing on my brother, Ahmed. Um, he was the only boy in the house, and um, you know, I'm just going to tell you what he had to go through uh, under the Israeli occupation. So Ahmed is the quiet boy, and he kept it all to himself, never threw a rock, never protested against the Israeli occupation. My mom was overprotective of him because he was the only boy in the house. So um, I'm going to be talking about the regular Israeli raids, assaults, and the kidnapping of children. The main purpose of these raids in the West Bank and occupied East Jerusalem is to terrorize, make their presence felt, send a clear message of who is in charge, um, and give uh, the Palestinian children a taste of what life would be like inside Israeli prisons. So my brother Ahmad, who was just a child, never threw a rock, remember, at the Israeli occupation, was kidnapped three times from three different places, places that should be safe. He was kidnapped from home. So at any time, day or night, Israeli forces armed Israeli forces can kick down your front door, invade your privacy, ransack your house, assault you, and kidnap your kids. As we were getting ready for lunch, my mom and us kids, my mom had made luchia. I don't know if you guys know what luchia is, but she made luchia that day. And we were getting ready to have lunch. So we can hear a loud bang on the front door. So right away we knew we have to figure out where should we hide my brother, who was just 11. We decided to sneak him out to the house across the alley. So we lived on the second floor. So we used a piece of wood to build a bridge between the neighbor's window and our window, and there he goes. So we took that risk, thinking he won't be arrested that day. 
hoping he won't be taken that day. But unfortunately, he was, because minutes after, the Israeli occupation raided the neighbor's house, and he was taken along with the neighbor's two boys. Now Ahmed is kidnapped from the street, as my brother and I were walking home. From school, uh, minutes away from home, we notice empty streets, and we can hear a car behind us. So we look behind us, and we see an Israeli um, armed vehicle uh, speeding up toward us. And then four Israeli soldiers jumped out of that vehicle and snatched my brother, shoved him around, and kicked him inside their vehicle, and he was taken. I will never forget the look on his face. I froze in that moment. It feels like the world stopped spinning. Even though I was only nine, I still feel guilty for being helpless and not being able to protect my brother. From school, this time Ahmed is in high school. He attended high school, uh, it's called uh, Rashidiya High School, which is in occupied Jerusalem, a few miles away from our home, the refugee camp. So we get the news that the school has been raided, surrounded by Israeli forces, and they're firing tear gas inside the school and arresting the kids. My mom is terrified. She rushes to the school to find out that he was taken to the Israeli detention center. So my mom is very stubborn. She goes to the detention center and she camps outside the Israeli detention center, refusing to leave until they let him go. And they did, they let him go, because they have nothing to charge him with. Now I would like to tell you about the lethal force used against Palestinian children. Being a Palestinian child living under occupation also means that your life is worthless. You could be shot and killed at any moment for no reason. No Israeli soldier will be charged or held accountable. In fact, they can get rewarded, praised, and called heroes. Last Ramadan, Israel Security Minister Ben Gavir praised the Israeli soldier and called him a hero for shooting dead a 12-year-old boy who was playing in front of his home with his friends in our refugee camp. In July 1990, one of my brother Ahmed's best friends, his name was Mundir Dabit, a 14-year-old boy shot dead for throwing a rock at the Israeli armed uh, vehicle during one of the raids to the refugee camp. So these are few of endless stories, just to allow you to get a sense of what is it like to live under Israeli occupation. I don't have enough time to tell you about the time that I got shot by a rubber bullet when I was walking to my uncle's house, or time to talk about my dear uncle who lost two of his children shot dead by Israeli occupation forces, or the restriction of movement, the endless harassments um, at the Israeli occupation point how the occupation interferes with your life decision making like what school should your kids go to or uh, where should you live or who to marry or how you can lose your residency simply you can't live in Palestine just if you, if you leave the country for um, th more than three years thank you guys for listening thank you for being here thank you Sabrina that was